Hi everybody, we are from the U of T Trash Team, and today in this video we'll be showing you how to follow the Seabin Waste Characterization Protocol. This protocol is for anyone who is interested in collecting data by quantifying and characterizing the litter found in their seabins. The objective of this protocol is to quantify and characterize the debris found in seabins across the Great Lakes. Using the data collected from this protocol, we can quantify our total impact and compare across sites since it is collected in a systematic way. We recommend you follow this protocol 5 to 10 times for each bin each season. Within the 5 to 10 times, ensure you include 1 to 2 wet events. Here are all the materials you will need to collect data from your sea bins. You will need a sharps container, a first aid kit, gloves, squirt bottle, a 5 gallon bucket, a catch bag with the contents inside, a clipboard with the printed protocol and data sheets, a sharpie, pen, tweezers, label tape, plastic cups for the small debris, large Ziploc bags for the large debris, a 28 centimeter diameter sieve, the two millimeter sieve, kitchen scale, a luggage scale. Now it's time to fill in the first section of your data sheet. First, fill in the name of you and your partner, the date that the bin was retrieved, the time that the bin was retrieved, the date that the bin was last emptied, along with the time that the bin was last emptied. Next, fill in the name of the marina which you are currently at, and if your marina has more than one sea bin, fill in the sea bin ID which you are currently analyzing. Then fill in the wind conditions, whether it has rained in the past 24 hours, the weather conditions, the fullness of the catch bag, and whether you have taken a picture of the debris. Now it's time to go grab the contents from your sea bin. First, ensure you have your life jacket on, you are wearing gloves, and have an extension pole or a pike pole to safely remove the catch bag from the sea bin. Head to the power source of the sea bin and turn the sea bin off. It is very important you unplug the sea bin before extracting the catch bag. If removed while the power is still on, this can allow debris to be sucked in and could damage the pump. Now grab your pike pole or extension pole and hook it onto the catch bag to slowly remove it. And be careful as depending on the amount of debris which is accumulated, the catch bag can be very heavy and you may need two people. Once the catch bag is safely removed, you can put your pike pole or extension pole aside and come back to give the catch bag a couple shakes to remove any excess water. Once you've done that, you can begin to head over to where your table is and materials are. Once you're back at your table, grab your trash scale and hook it onto the catch bag. Wait until the number on the scale stops fluctuating and record that number on your data sheet. Proceed to grab the bottom of the catch bag with the circular wire carefully and dump all the contents onto the tarp. You may have to help guide the material out of the catch bag. And if you do this, carefully place your hands inside the catch bag and grab sections of the plant material you can see have no dangerous materials attached. Continue to do this until the catch bag is empty. Before placing your catch bag back into the water, take your luggage scale and weigh your empty catch bag and record it onto your data sheet. This will be subtracted from the weight of the full catch bag to get the total weight of debris collected that day. Now that your catch bag is empty, you can go ahead and put it back into the sea bin. So hook the catch bag onto your pipe pole extension pole and slowly place it back into the yellow barrel, ensuring that the black rim is clipped onto the outside of the sea bin. Put down your pike pole or extension pole and turn this power source back on. Once the sea bin is back on, it should react as so. Now it's time to sort through the large debris, which is anything larger than a toonie. First, take a large Ziploc bag and label the bag with large debris, sea bin ID, date, and your initials. Begin going through your pile of plant material section by section, picking out all the large debris, which is any material larger than a toonie. Once you find a piece of large debris, put it to the side to be characterized and tallied later. Make sure to look closely, as lots of clear film can get stuck within the plant material and it can be difficult to see. Once you are done sorting through all the plant material for large debris, begin to quantify and characterize your pile. It's easiest when you have two people. One person calling out each item and the other is recording on your data sheet. Here are some examples of common large debris items we find in the sample, such as food wrappers, film, straws, paper, fragments, and cigarette butts. Once you're finished, close up the Ziploc bag and put it aside. Next, it's time to wash out all the small debris from your plant material. 
Here, small debris is anything larger than 2 mm and smaller than a toonie. From the pile of plant material which has now been cleaned of the large debris, take two large handfuls of the plant material and place it into the 5 gallon bucket. Now grab your bucket, 2 mm sieve, and your 28 cm diameter sieve and walk over to where your hose is. Place everything down and use the hose to fill up your 5 gallon bucket to about 3 quarters full. While it's filling, ensure you're spraying down your plant material. This allows the plant material to loosen up so it releases the small debris entrained. Now once the bucket is 3 quarters full, turn off your hose and let the bucket settle for 1 minute. This will allow the small debris to float to the surface. If you missed any large debris from before and you find some floating at the top, remove it and place it in the large debris bag and record it in your data sheet. Place the 28 diameter sieve into the bucket and push it down until it gets stuck. This separates the big plant material from our small debris. Next, pour the contents of the bucket into the 2 mm sieve slowly. Ensure you don't cause any splashing as this will cause you to lose some of the debris from the sample. Once you've poured all the water from the bucket into the sieve, Repeat the washing process for this batch of plant material twice more, so in total, you've rinsed it three times. Once the plant material has been washed three times, you can remove the plant material from the bucket and put it aside for proper disposal later. Head back to your table where you have your original big pile of unwashed plant material and place another two handfuls in your bucket and repeat the washing method. Repeat these steps until the entire pile of the plant material is washed of the small debris. Once all the plant material has been washed of the small debris and they are all in the 2 mm sieve, rinse off the 5 gallon bucket in the 28 cm diameter sieve into the 2 mm sieve to ensure we get any small debris that may have been stuck to the sides during the washing process. Now that you've completed the washing process, bring over the 2 mm sieve to the table. Start by clearing your table of any small pieces of plant material that may have been left behind to ensure you have a clean working space. On your 2 mm sieve, begin scraping all the contents on the sieve into a big pile in the middle. Because our sample here has over 50 to 100 pieces of small debris, we are going to subsample it. From this pile, then make four separate small equal sized piles and move them into individual corners. Once they are separated, have someone else who wasn't looking to pick the pile you will be characterizing and quantifying to reduce bias. If your sample has less than 50 to 100 pieces of small debris, you don't subsample. So skip separating into four equal piles and instead proceed as explained with whatever is on your sieve. Ensure to record on your data sheet whether you subsampled or not. This is important as you'll be extrapolating any subsampled data on your data sheet. Now you and your partner can begin to sort through your sample. Begin by carefully going through the smaller plant material and pick out any debris which resembles being anthropogenic, such as hard fragments, pellets, film, foam, etc. Put all the small debris you find on the side to quantify and characterize later. And if you find any large debris in your sample of small debris, you can remove it and place it in the large debris ziplock and record it on your data sheet. Once the sample or subsample has been cleaned of the small debris, you can now characterize and quantify what you found. Have one person call out the type of anthropogenic debris they are picking up and how many they are placing into the pre-weighed plastic jar. Have another person record and tally each item onto the data sheet as it's called out and placed into the pre-weighed plastic jar. Once you've finished analyzing your small debris, label your plastic cup with either sample or subsample, small debris, the CBIN ID, the date, and your initials or name. Next, using your kitchen scale, weigh the small debris and record the weight. To obtain the final weight of your sample, subtract the weight of the empty plastic cup from the weight of your sample or subsample. And if you subsampled, then fill in the extrapolated weight below by multiplying your final weight by 4. And if you did not subsample, then ignore that last step. It's time to fill in the rest of your data sheet, so begin by adding up all your final counts for each category. And if you subsampled, you must extrapolate your final count by multiplying each total by 4. And if you didn't subsample, you can just ignore this step. For the last step of your small debris data sheet, add up all the final counts of each category and record under count of small debris and sample or subsample. And if you subsampled, you must extrapolate this total by 4 or just add up all the extrapolated sums from each category. Next, weigh your large debris and record the weight on your data sheet. To obtain the final weight of your large debris, subtract the average weight of an empty Ziploc bag from the weight of your large debris. And last but not least is disposing of the plant material. 
Collect all your plant material and throw it away in the garbage. Do not place it back in the water. Although we rinsed it three times, there are still many small debris entrained in the plant material which we do not want to place back in the water. If you have more than one bin at your marina, you can just repeat this entire process for each bin. And at the end of the day, take all your data sheets and upload the data onto the Excel spreadsheet template we've created for you to keep the data compiled and organized. And that concludes the end of our video. Thank you for watching our waste characterization tutorial, and we're excited to work with you all on this project. If you have any questions, please email cassandra.sherlock at mail.utoronto.ca and we can help you out. And happy auditing, everyone.